Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's rock and roll with these six problems of solving by graphing. Now, I haven't taught you guys substituting yet, but I'm going to do all six of these with graphing. So the very first equation I look at, it's already in my slope-intercept form, my y equals mx plus b. So I need to identify my slope, and I need to identify my y-intercept for each of my equations. I should have written this down for you guys, but that's going to be what helps us with graphing. In this first example, my slope is 3 over 2. My y-intercept is negative 1. In this second one, the invisible coefficient, Alan, in front of this negative x is what? In this first one. Look up on the board, sweetie. This negative x, what's the coefficient in front? Uh, negative. negative 1. And then my b is positive 4. Feel free to collaborate with me. Collaborate and listen. All right, b, negative 1. Boom, down here. My rise over run is my slope. You can sit down, sweetie. Up three, over two. Look at how straight that line is. And then I've got positive four. One, two, three, four. My slope is negative one over one if I wanted to make that a fraction. So I go down one because it's negative to the right one. Down one to the right one. Boom. I found the point of intersection. Alan, what's the x value at this point? What's the x value at this point? Two. Two. What's the y value? Two. Two. Emily, is that what you got? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, now these ones get a little bit trickier right off the bat. So now these are in standard form. These are not in y equals mx plus b form, so I have to do an extra step with it. Are you paying attention? Huh? Yeah. yeah. And everybody's going to hear me calling you out on the, on the middle of this YouTube video. All right, negative 3x plus 3y. I like to rewrite them where I have space to do a little bit more work. I want to get my y by itself. Anytime I'm getting my y by itself, I need to make sure that I'm using inverse operations. operations. Cool. Emily, help me out with this one. If I've got a negative 3x, that's what I need to move because I want to get it over to the right side. What am I going to do? Excellent. Whatever you do to one side, I have to do to the... 3y equals... These are not like terms. I can't combine this, this negative 6 and the positive 3x. I'm going to put the x first, the term with the x first. And there's one more step I have to do to get rid of that positive 3. This is 3 times y. Mm -hmm. So dividing is going to be what gets rid of the 3. And now I simplify y equals, what's 3 over 3? Three? 1. Do I need to put the 1 if I put 1x? You can. It doesn't make it wrong. And then I've got negative 6 divided by 3. What's that? Two. What type of 2? Beautiful. Okay, now I have my equation in y equals mx plus b. So I can really identify what my slope is. And what's my slope? What's my number in front of my x, my coefficient? My m value. My m value, sweetie. One. Beautiful. My b value is negative two. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that one because that's easy for me to do real quick here. So I always start with my b value, negative two. I go down to negative two. And I liked how you labeled each of these little dots over here, or each of these little lines. Now if my slope is one, this is one over one. It's positive. So Alan, when I use my rise over run, Will I go up one for positive or down one for positive? Down. For positive. Mm -hmm. And then if it's a positive one on the bottom, will I go to the right one or will I go, will I go to the left one? Right. Excellent. I'm going to do a couple of points so that way it makes it easy. I'm really working on the straightness of my lines. Now I need to do the same thing with the second equation. This negative x plus y equals 3. This isn't in y equals mx plus b form. I have to make sure that I move my negative x. How do I move that negative x? Excellent. Scroll down to where you see systems of equations. And any of those first couple lessons that are on systems of equations, you'd be able to do. Systems of equations. I think it's like S something. All right. 
my m and my b in this equation, first of all, there's nothing else that I need to do. All I need to do is add that x. That's super easy. What's the coefficient in front of my x if I don't see it? One. One. I'll put it over one since that way it's easy when I'm doing my rise over run. And my b is three. Okay. So I go up to three. One, two, three. And I've got positive 1 over 1. It's the same slope. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Oh. They're parallel. They'll never intersect. So how many solutions do they have? No solution. Excellent, Emily. Good. These are parallel. They'll never intersect. So they'll never have a common point. They'll never have a solution that is the same. Very good. Number three, this one is when y equals mx plus b form. So what's the m for this first one? Two. Two. If I wanted to make it a fraction, I'd put it over one. That helps me with my rise over run. What's my b? One. one. Am I going too fast on? No. You got it? Okay, so my b value is positive one. That's what intersects my y-axis. And now my slope is 2 over 1. So if I'm doing rise over run, will I go up for two, positive 2 or down for positive 2? Up. Up positive 2. To the right one or to the left one? Excellent, because the 1 is positive. So I got my first line. But the second line is in standard form. I have to do the inverse operations in order to get my y by itself, isolated into slope-intercept form. Inverse operations is what Emily said we had to do for number two. So what's the inverse of negative 2x? Uh, Excellent. Mm -hmm. Y equals 2x minus 3. There's nothing else that I need to do. There's no coefficient in front of my y. There's no negative. Now I can identify my m and my b. What's my m for this equation? Two. Two. And my b is? Three. three. Very good. One, two, three. Ooh, this is interesting. Up two over one. What do you notice? What do you notice? They're both what? What do you notice? They're parallel. So what type of solution do they have? No solution. no solution. We would always get so excited in algebra when we didn't have a solution because we didn't have to do as much work. It was just no solution. Number four. Is this top one in y equals mx plus b form? Yep. yep. So what's my m? Two. Two. My b is? Three. Three. One, two, three. There's my y-intercept. To do rise over run. Do I go up or down for positive two? Up. Up. Up to my denominator is one, positive one, so I go to the right. right. This one I've got to convert. How do I get rid of that negative 3x? Excellent. See that? And I get y equals, I have positive 3x. What type of 5 is that? Positive. positive. So 3x plus 5. What's my m? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's my B? Excellent. So my B is five. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, okay, so this is kind of the funky ones that Masuko was talking about in class. So this is positive three over one. So if I were to go up three, which is what we would normally do, it takes me off of the graph. So positive 3 over positive 1 
can also be the same thing as negative 3 over negative 1. Because a negative 3 divided by a negative 1 is a what? Positive. So if I wanted to do negative 3 instead, instead of going up, I would go down. Down, down 1, 2, 3. And then if I was doing negative 1, it would be what? To the? Yes. And this one is down 3, 1, 2, 3, to the left one. Boom, there's our point. What's that x value? What's that x value of that intersection point? Negative 1, negative, negative 2. What's the y value? Negative 1. Fortunately, this is a little secret for those of you guys who are watching the video. A little secret is you'll never have to graph it on the EOC. You'll be able to use your calculator, and I can teach you guys how it can calculate the point of intersection with the calculator. Ms. Suko teaches you by hand to make you suffer first. Okay. You got it, Alan? Are you going to watch the video? Cool. Okay. Look at 5 and... Uh, 5 is super easy. Look at both of those are already in y equals mx plus b form. So excellent. I can write my m and my b really easily. What's my m in that top equation? It's beautiful. What's my b? Excellent. What's my m for the bottom one? Excellent. My b is? All right, let's jam. I'm going to do the top one. One, two, three, four. It's positive two. So what do I do? Up two or down two? Up two to the right one. Up two to the right one. Up two to the right one. Sometimes you got to do a couple of points, so that way it helps you keep your line really straight, and it helps you find the point of intersection. Okay. Now this one. Go to positive five. One, two, three, four, five. It's negative one over one. So where do I go first? Down one or up one? Down one. And then to the right one or to the left one if it's positive one on the bottom? If it's positive one on the bottom, to the right. Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one. Boop! There's that common point. What's that point? One, two, positive what? What's the x value? Alan, huh? what's the positive x value here? Four. Not four. A three. Three. What's the y value? Zero. I mean, two. Two. Last one. Alan, we're making excellent time so that you can go on your date. Just kidding. I was going to ask if you had a question. He didn't even smile when I made that joke. All right, I have to do the extra steps with this one because these are not in slope intercept form, these are in standard form. So I'm going to rewrite this top one down here so I can work with it with some extra room. I got to use inverse operations to get rid of this positive 8x. Armando, coming in strong here. This positive 8x. How do I move this positive 8x? What's the inverse? Excellent. And I get negative 2y equals, these are not like terms. I can't combine these over here on the right side. So it's going to be negative 8x minus 6. There's one more step, Armando, that I have to do to get rid of this negative 2. Do you see a subtraction sign in between these two? These two terms are stuck together. They're stuck together through what operation? If I have a negative 2 in front of my y, what does that mean? Negative 2 times y, plus y, minus y, or divided by y? If they're next to each other. Do you see a plus sign? Good. They are being multiplied. So I have a coefficient in front of my variable. That means I'm multiplying. So what's the inverse then of multiply? Dividing. And I taught you guys that if I have these two terms like this separated, 
you're going to divide everything by negative 2. And that helps cancel this out right here, Armando. So then I get y equals, what's negative 8 divided by negative 2? What's negative 6 divided by negative 2? Now my equation is in slope-intercept form. I can find my slope and my y-intercept very easily. What's my m? My coefficient in front of the x. And if I wanted to make it a fraction to help me with rise over run, I'd put it over 1. And what's my v, my b value? Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it. You can, you can wait to graph it or you can do it right away. 1, 2, 3. And again, if I went up 4, because this positive 4 means that I would go up for rise, I would go off of the graph. So there also is another way that I can do this. I can do it as negative 4 over negative 1, because that equals positive 4 over 1. So instead of going up, let's go down. 1, 2, 3, 4. But it means I need to go negative again, which means going to the left. Down 4 and to the left 1. Because once I draw the... Once I draw this line, this is still a positive slope. My last equation, last one, we're in the home stretch, kiddos. Okay, how do I get rid of this negative 20x? And. Excellent, let's power through this. Add 20x to both sides. Boom, I get 5y equals 20x plus 15. How do I knew it was plus 15? Because the 15 is um, positive. positive. One more step. How do I get rid of this 5? Armando, help me out with this. Just like we did with this negative 2. 5 times y plus y minus y divided by y. What's happening right now? Do you see a plus sign? No. Mm -mm. Multiplication. So it's the inverse of multiplication. Division. Excellent. I've got to divide everything by 5. Power through. Y equals 20 divided by 5 is 4x. 15 divided by 5 is 3. This one's interesting. Look at this. Here's the same line. I told you guys what happens when we have the same line. How many solutions do they have? They share every single one of their points. So how many solutions do they have? Infinite solutions. They're the same line. Excellent. Cool. 18 minutes.